welcome back, my best chem students. I started these videos in 2011, but we are now firmly into 2012. So welcome. We're talking about equilibrium, and the t next topic is something that was studied by a dead guy named Le Chatelier, who looked at ways to disturb or stress an equilibrium. Now we're going to see a variety of ways that can be done. Now the goal is to find out two things. One, is the reaction going to shift, we talk about a shift, to form more product. And the only way you can form product is to consume reactant. Or are we going to shift to form more reactant, thereby consuming product? So those will be our two issues. And once we decide what direction it's going to shift to reestablish equilibrium, once we've done this, then we have to justify it. We have to explain why this happens. So this is an observation. We need to move into the justification or explanation mode. Now to do that, we want to appeal to one of two things, either kinetics or Q. This is really a key point where Q comes into play. So let's take a look at this first one and let's set up a generalized reaction. Um, a moles of A plus B moles of B are in equilibrium with C moles of C plus D moles of D. Now, let's assume for now that these are all gases or aqueous, right? We won't worry about solids and liquids yet. So, um, if we do that, we can set up Q. So, let's just address this first one right now. And we'll set up Q. Q would be uh, the concentration of C raised to the C times D to the D over A to the A, should know this by now, B to the B. Now, um, first off, we're going to talk about um, the effect on Q, and then we wanna look at the effect on the actual concentrations. Now, when we're answering this, and I'm not gonna go through all of these in detail, I'm going to give you a copy of the teacher notes, but when we are answering this, the answer is about what happens after the stress, so after the stress, how are we going to reestablish equilibrium? Okay, now for most of these, we're going to reestablish the original K. If it's a temperature effect, we're going to reestablish a new K value because our equilibrium constant's dependent on temperature. Okay, now. Let's take a look at this one. Let's say we increase the concentration of a reactant, and for now, let's just say we've increased the concentration of B. All right, so if we increase the concentration of B, in terms of kinetics, so this could be one argument, in terms of kinetics, if you increase the concentration of reactants, you're going to increase your frequency of collision of reactants. And what's going to happen is that the rate forward will end up being greater than the rate reverse until we get to K again, until we reach that magic K ratio, okay? So that's a kinetics argument. In terms of Q, if we increase the concentration of B, we decrease Q. Now at equilibrium, Q is equal to K. When we've done our stress, so the stress 
causes Q to be less than K. When Q is less than K, so this is going to cause a decrease. It's going to make Q less than K. And that means we're going to shift to make more product. Now, the only way we can make more product, so we would increase our concentration of C, we would increase our concentration of D. The only way to make more product, which if the forward rate is greater than the reverse rate, we're going to make more product, um, is to consume reactant. So we're going to decrease the concentration of A. Now B's a little tricky. Because what happened here is B increased initially to reestablish equilibrium. B would decrease as it's consumed. But for B, we would actually have a net increase, small net increase in B. Okay? So it starts with a big increase as our stress. As it reestablishes equilibrium, it decreases, but we do end up with a net slight increase. And there is a great flash video on this that I will show you at the beginning of class, and I think it will help with that, okay? Now, I want to just do one of the, the product ones, and then I will leave that for you at that point. So let me erase this. And we're dealing with that same reaction. I'm assuming you have it on your paper. Now, what happens if we increase product? Well, if we increase product, what's going to happen is you're going to increase your collision frequency of your products. And that means that our rate forward is going to end up being less than our rate reverse. And to reestablish that point where rate forward is equal to rate reverse, that's what we mean by reestablishing equilibrium, right? We, if the rate reverse is faster, that means it's going to shift to make more product. Excuse me, to make more reactant. Sorry about that. So if you add, you consume to get back. If you remove, you replace to get back. So that's another way to kind of memorize the direction, but that's not enough to help you with the justification. So if you add, you'll remove. You'll um, remove. If you remove, you need to replace to get back. It's probably got to better be a better way um, than using that word remove. Okay, so if you add some, you've got to consume to get rid of some, to get rid of the excess. If you remove some, you've got to replace it, you've got to form it. All right, now let's talk about it in terms of Q. So remember, generally, Q is equal to products overall over reactants overall. So if we are increasing a product, that means we're increasing Q. So Q becomes greater than K. When Q is greater than K, it means that you're going to shift to make more reactant. So this means you're going to increase the Q so that it becomes greater than K. The effect on reactants is to increase both or all. Okay. The effect on products is to decrease um, the one. So, so let's go ahead and go back to this example. See, I needed that example there, D, moles of D. Okay, so let's say we increased C. So if we increased C and it's going to shift to make more reactant, overall we're going to get a decrease in D. And remember, we still end up with a slight increase remaining of C. It started as an increase. This was the stress. Okay, to relieve the stress, it's going to decrease, 
but we are going to end up with a net increase. That I know is very confusing, and I think the video is going to help us quite a bit. Okay, now I have uh, just enough time to talk about temperature. You can think about temperature as if it is a reactant or a product, a substance on either side. Okay, um, so if it's endo, we would have had heat plus A moles of A plus B moles of B goes to C moles of C plus D moles of D. Okay, now it, it's hard to discuss um, in terms of Q um, because <laughs> temperature doesn't show up in Q really. Uh, it does indirectly, but not directly. So let's take a look at the endothermic example. If we increase the temperature, it's as if we're adding a reactant. So if you add, you have to consume. Well, what that increase in temperature does is it increases the rate of the forward direction because it's endothermic. And it's the forward that requires that temperature for effective collisions. So that means if it increases the forward, means the forward rate is going to be greater than the reverse rate. So that means overall in an endothermic, we're going to shift to make more product. Now, Often what you can do on this is in your justification, I think it's a very key one, is say the word since it is endothermic. I think that's really the key part of your justification. Since it is endothermic, the reaction will shift to make more product. That means all of your reactants especially the ones that are aqueous and gas, is what we're talking about right now, will decrease. And that means all of your products that are aqueous and gas will increase. All right. Now, here's what's key about temperature. And I'll give you, you know, my key. I'm not going to do any more on these, but I, hopefully it gives you the, a, a good overview of that. Is the key with temperature is that this reestablishment is going to be the reestablishment of a new equilibrium. And we'll see the mathematics of that in a couple of videos from now. Um, uh, I, I cover it. It's not on the AP test, but I think it's a very, very important concept to understand at this level. So when you justify these, I think a key, I don't think, I know, a key statement you want to make is since it's exothermic or since it's endothermic. Um, and then follow up with your next statement. Now, there is this little pencil trick that we teach in pre-AP, and I can teach you that if you're having trouble with that, but you still have to know how to justify. All that will do is get you to this, and that may or may not be worth a point. Often it's worth one point, and then the justification is worth a second point. Sometimes together they're worth one point. So it depends on how the question's worded. So the little pencil trick will give you the direction of the shift to reestablish, but it won't help you with your justification. So uh, you want to make sure you talk to me in class if I can help you more with this. So we're going to move on to this until the next video. This is signing off.